Hello, welcome to my kitchen, Kathmandu, Nepal. I'm going to show you guys how to make Tibetan tea, uh, demystify it, and make it simple, not complicated. Basically, good Tibetan tea is made with three ingredients, maybe four. Tea, of course, salt, and the best salt is the Himalayan red salt. You get in the, in the market in America, the Himalayan salt, because it has minerals that taste really good when it's mixed in a Tibetan tea, making Tibetan tea. But you can use any kind of salt. But the Himalayan salt is best. And then, uh, of course, you need a good quality butter. Today a monastery gave me some butter that is actually hand churned from the high mountain regions of Nepal. So I was very fortunate when visiting a monastery today to get this fresh butter. So butter is the best. You can use ghee too, but butter has all the milk fats that kind of make it thicker and creamier. Next you need water, of course. So to make things go a little bit more quickly, I'm going to put water from the thermos here, which is a little bit warm, and get us started. So we got the water going. I'm on a convection oven. Should go pretty quickly. Next I'm going to get the salt. Hold on. Salt is here. You can smell the good salt. It doesn't smell like salt. You can smell the minerals, a little sulfur smell in the Himalayan salt. This is Himalayan salt. It'll look pinker than this a lot of times. Then you take the salt, and for I'm making enough for about 16 ounces of Tibetan tea. So this, we're going to do it the easy way now. So I use about this much salt. You may want more or less. I like it salty. Of course, if you're using salted butter, it's going to require less. Next ingredient is tea. The quality of the tea doesn't make a whole lot of difference. This is really high quality oolong tea. Uh, but I make it often with super low quality tea too which is like, uh, kind of like a Lipton tea. I never use tea bags, it doesn't work that good. You, tea bags are a poor investment. Uh, this oolong tea makes the most fragrant and incredible butter tea. But here it is. This is very, 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 very special oolong tea. So we'll make it with this today. So there it goes. I make it strong. So, yeah. Then you get the tea started. Stir the tea in. For Tibetan tea, you don't have to follow all the rules of proper tea making. Uh, such as not boiling the tea and letting it sit five minutes and whatnot. Uh, that's a ritual you don't have to go through. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So I'm showing you the simple way. The uh, other simple way is a blender, which is obvious. Uh, for the blender, you use it as you would any blender. You pour the hot tea in the blender add the butter and then turn it on a low and let it turn it that way. But I'm going to show you a way without the, the uh, obvious. I often use this. It's a little plastic trekking container. You've probably seen them everywhere. Nalgene. They work great. So you take a uh, 
what you do is you let the tea do its thing, the tea and the salt. You take some butter. See how creamy and beautiful this butter is? My gosh, this is like from the mountain, the Zoris. They're not even cows. They're, they're the female yak. Everybody thinks yaks are females, but they're not. The female of the yak is a, called a Zordi. They're, they're, uh, they're the female version of a yak. So you put your butter in there, however much you want. I use quite a bit of butter. And now stir this a little bit. Get it all nice and all the tea out of it. Make a nice good batch. So you put a, for a container like this, you can put a little more butter than I just did. You can add a little more, like, like this much more. Put it in there. And then you add the tea. There is a tea going in here. Into the plastic Nalgene container. You fill it up about one inch from the top. Fill it up about one inch from the top. Close it real good. And shake it like crazy. Ah! And shake it like that. Make sure the lid is sealed really good. This is an old one, so it leaks a little, but it, it didn't used to, but it's, it only leaks a little bit now. You, for safety, you can always put a cloth over it, although I never, generally don't. You shake it about this much, and you're done. Open it, definitely open it with a cloth over it. it it's just a safety precaution in case it, it wants a spew out volcanic Tibetan tea. Then you're done. It'll look something like this when you're done. Now, maybe that doesn't look so good, but it's, it's really good. Uh, I'm going to tell you a secret now that I, I discovered that makes it way, way better. And that's adding a Spoon or spoonful, a tablespoon to three tablespoons of full fat powdered milk in the concoction. And that may, makes it absolutely fabulous. Tibetans don't do this. Uh, they add plain milk, which you can do too. But plain milk's a little bit of a hassle because you have to heat the milk up separately. But Tibetans that I have served tea to say mine with the powdered milk is the best tea they've ever had. But oftentimes in the mountains you'll get it just like this. It's kind of like like the urine of the unhealthy person, kind of a cloudy yellow, which will depend on the tea you make. And then you just check it out. This actually is is a pretty perfect batch of tea, just like you get in the mountain. So then you've made your tea. You can put it in a thermos, keep it warm. It'll, it'll stay mixed up for as long as it's hot. Another option that I is to, instead of a plastic thing like this, if you have a stainless steel one quart thermos, you can pour it into that and shake it up really good and you don't have to transfer it to a thermos. So that's option number two, or option number three. So there you go, making your own Tibetan tea. And it's an acquired taste, although it didn't take me more than one cup to acquire it, but some people never do. Okay, namaste. Hope you enjoyed my little home video, gave me an excuse to make some Tibetan tea.